welcome to Welcome Road Baptist Church and the Fundamentals of Christianity. My name is Dan Odom. Thank you for stopping by and joining with me today. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, giving us a thumbs up, and leaving a comment down below. And we'd appreciate it a lot. I want to talk about a, a thought in a particular subject, and that is concerning salvation. Uh, what is needed? Faith and works, or faith or works, uh, what does the Bible say? Now we're going to do a couple of videos on this and take two passages of Scripture, and you can see on the uh, PowerPoint here that it's Romans chapter 4 or and uh, James chapter number 2. Now both of these uh, chapters deal with, a, with the topic of justification and salvation but especially justification. Those are the words that are used. And so both of these passages are used to, to defend both positions. There are those that believe that salvation is strictly by faith, and there are those that believe you must add works to the salvation, that it's not just enough to call upon Jesus Christ for salvation, but there will also and must be works that go along with that to not simply reveal that a person is saved, but to make them saved, so that for them to be saved. And so we like to take both of these passages and look at them in uh, not in great detail, but to kind of hit the surface of them and see what the Bible says. Today we're going to look at Romans chapter number four. That'll be the passage that we look at first and that we deal with. Romans chapter number four. And so we have the verses here on the PowerPoint. And so we'll read uh, the first eight verses, and then make just a few comments about these verses to see what uh, the Apostle Paul said concerning justification and faith and works. Paul writing in Romans 4 and verse 1 says this, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, this is making reference to the Jewish people, as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Verse 4. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Now, we're not going to really examine verses 6 through 8, although we could, but just for time sake and space on the PowerPoint, we're not going to look at those three scriptures. But if you, if you notice verse 6 through 8, uh, Paul says that David describes the man that God does not, or that God imputes or puts on his account that he is righteous. And this man does it without works, Paul is saying. And then he gives us a quote from Psalm uh, that David is blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. You know, wonderful passage there. But I want to focus on the first five or six verses, first five verses that deal with Abraham. Okay, now, Paul says justification comes through faith. Now, what is justification? Lots of different definitions and ideas of the word. But justification is the work of God where he declares that a person is just, which simply speaks of the fact that they are right before God and right with God. So you have an individual. They are, uh, well, everyone, when we are born, we are born in our sin. We are born as sinners. The older that we become, we, we sin against God, we begin to act what is in our hearts, okay? We, we are sinners. And because of that sin, we are at war and at enmity, the Bible says, with God. We're fighting against God. And so peace must be made. But peace cannot be, be made between the, the, two, the two individuals because God is completely holy and man is completely sinful. There's nothing that man can do to get to God. So man has to be made right 
or made righteous in the eyes of God. Our character and who we are must change. Well, justification is the legal process uh, that is that takes place in our lives where we are changed from being unrighteous or unjust to now we are righteous and we are now just or justified in the eyes of God. Justification, they are, we are no longer guilty in the eyes of God for our sinfulness. We are brought into a legal standing before the judge of the earth as not guilty. Our guilt was placed on Christ on the cross, okay? And when we call upon Christ for salvation, that act where God made Jesus Christ a propitiation or the appeasement for his wrath on the cross, when Christ went through that on the cross, when we call upon Jesus Christ for salvation, that privilege God then gives to us, and we are now justified, made righteous in the eyes of God. Now, here in this passage, Paul says that that justification, our standing before God, comes through faith. It comes by faith. Now, a few thoughts concerning faith, okay? One, faith is not a work. Faith is not a work. Now, I'm going to read two verses, or a couple of verses, and then explain it. Romans 3, 27 and 28 says this, Where is boasting then? Okay, if we were saved by works, or he says in the verses before that we're not saved by works, but it's by faith. And so then he asked this question, where is boasting then? He says, it is excluded by, uh, by what law? Is it a law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And then Romans 4, 2 says, For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not before God. Now notice what Paul does. Paul is very clear, and Paul is very plain, that faith and works is not the same thing. Now there are passages in John, John chapter number 6. The people ask Jesus Christ and says, What are the works that we may do to inherit eternal life? And Christ responds and says, the work is to believe on the one that the Father has sent, which is to believe on him. Now, people will take that verse, and, and there's other verses that describe that what we do as believing is a work. But whenever you look at Scripture and you look at the words in their context, Christ was not telling them that faith was a work. Christ was responding to their question of works. What are the works? Plural. Then he responds with work in the singular. And that is to believe on Christ, to believe on him. Christ is not telling them, well, you have to work and that faith is a work. They were wanting to know what must we do to be saved. That's all he's doing. And so what do we have to do? Well, believe on Christ. Um, it's not that we just sit around in salvation and then one day Jesus walks up and he saves us. Well, no, we have to. There's something that we have to do. We have to place our faith in Him. We have to call upon Him for salvation. Admit that we are sinners. But understand something, that that in and of itself, though, is not a work, okay? It is not a de one of the deeds of the law. One of the deeds of the law that we could use as an, as an example would be from the Ten Commandments. Um, uh, Christ says, in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not bear false witness. Don't lie. Okay, well, nobody watching this video has lived their life without telling a lie. Okay, but what if we could go our entire life without telling a lie? We still would not be saved. Why? Because it's not about keeping the law and working. It's, it's all about faith. So faith is not a work. Secondly, though, faith is a requirement for righteousness. Listen to Romans 4, 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Notice, how did Abraham receive the righteousness of God? By believing. 
placing his faith in God. Now, when did this happen? Well, it happened back in Genesis 11 and 12 when Abraham began to follow to follow God. But Genesis 15 and verse 6 reveals to us this truth. It says, Genesis 15, 6, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. What I want you to see and notice that in, in Romans, Paul is focusing on faith for righteousness. Do you want the righteousness of God? Yes. Then don't work for it. Believe God for it. I know there's some that don't believe that. Well, you mean all I have to do is believe? All I, 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 there's nothing that I have to do? The only thing that you have to do is re realize you're a sinner and call upon God for His righteousness. Allow Him to give you His righteousness. Third thought. If salvation could be obtained by works, God would owe us. If I could work my way to heaven, or if I could obtain the righteousness of God by works and doing something, then God would owe me. Well, what do you mean? Look at Romans 4, verse 4 and verse 5. Now, to him that worketh, the man that works for his salvation, or just is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. In other words, the reward is not given based upon grace, but is given based upon works. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Notice the end of verse 4, but of debt. If I could work my way to heaven, uh, then God would owe me. You, you see, I mean, God would stand in debt to me. I, I could stand in heaven and say, see, look, look, I made it on my own. I, I made it by doing these good deeds and by doing these works. And God says, no. I, I don't owe you. I, God says, I don't owe you anything. <laughs> I don't owe you anything. And so faith, if salvation can be attained by works, then God would owe us. And then fourthly, consider several verses here. Salvation must be by grace, not by works. Now, Romans 3 and verse 20, Paul goes into some detail about this in, the, uh, in these five verses. And I want to read Romans 3. Because Paul lays this down before he gets over to Abraham. But I'm going backwards here, and I want you to see these verses. Romans 3 and 20 says this, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay, I know that I have sin in my life because the law of God tells me that I have sin. Don't bear a false witness, God says. Don't tell a lie. So when I bear false witness, when I lie, well, I know I've transgressed or overstepped the law of God. I've sinned. Verse 21, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. How was it manifested? Verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Here, Paul lets us know that salvation must be by grace. Why? Because the only thing that the law does in verse number 20 is reveal or show me my sin. That is the only thing the law can do. The only thing that these deeds that I, that I am supposed to obey, the only thing they do is show me that I'm a sinner. And then it shows me that I've sinned and I've come short of the glory of God. That there's no way that I can obtain the righteousness of God by the works of the law. It must be by grace and it must be through faith. Now, I realize, Someone may watch this and say, yeah, but James chapter number two, that's going to be another video. And we're going to explain what James means when he says that we are justified by the things that we do. I hope the lesson was a help to you. Please go back, read these verses and see that our salvation is by grace and it is through faith. There's nothing that we can do to gain salvation. It is a free gift. 
And since there's nothing that we can do to lose or to gain our salvation, we cannot lose it because we are justified. Our standing before God has been changed and has been changed forever. As you read these scriptures, I hope they'll be a help to you and a blessing. May God bless you as you continue to walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm.